Uncharted is the long-awaited, uh, development hell riddled movie adaptation of the beloved video game franchise that takes a lot of liberties with the beloved video game franchise. Um, and if you're a longtime uh, devoted fan of this series, you're probably going to have a lot of issues and a lot of nitpicks by the time the credits roll. But um, to, to more casual fans and viewers, it is a perfectly serviceable action-adventure genre entry um, with strong lead performances, if not a little bit of underdeveloped characterization surrounding them, uh, starring Tom Holland as Nathan Drake, which right away is sure to ruffle feathers of certain fans. Um, this, this choice uh, makes sense by the time the movie is over though there's a lot of conflict um, between, you know, paying respect to what the video games did and that franchise while also trying to kind of push ahead and forge their own uh, film franchise. Uh, the, main, the main thing being um, making Nathan Drake Tom Holland's age and turning this more into an origin story where Victor Sully, or Sully Sullivan is now Mark Wahlberg who for a very long time was one of the favorites to be cast as Nathan Drake when this movie was first in development. So a lot of, a lot of changes to this movie as the years have gone on. The end result is a dynamic between Nate and Sully that is not quite as familial as the video games. Maybe that's something that will, that will be explored in further installments if they do it. As, as just a movie, as a pairing, their, their banter is a lot more, um, brotherly. Their chemistry is really strong as far as I'm concerned, don't get me wrong, but it's just different. And those types of differences between the games and the movie are prevalent throughout. And another thing that I think is going to be a little bit off-putting is how much of this movie is taken from Uncharted 4, which is the end of the series. Uh, there, there is a lot of flashbacks in that game. But it seems kind of odd to take some some recognized set pieces and, and story beats and character arcs from the last game and throw them into your origin movie. All of that to say, I did really enjoy this movie. This isn't um, a video game franchise that I'm like super protective over. I really enjoy the games, but this wasn't something where I'm like, I need it to be as accurate as possible or I'm going to hate it. Um... And last thing is that Mark Wahlberg is playing Mark Wahlberg. It's not necessarily Sully. So if you're expecting that from him, um, probably going to be disappointed. But as far as just a Mark Wahlberg performance goes, I thought he was good in the role. And I, like I said, I thought he had very good um, banter and chemistry with Tom Holland when the script did allow for it. And as Drake, I thought Tom Holland did a good job as well. I thought he embodied a lot of, of the... I guess naivety, a lot of the, the one-liners and remarks and all the resourcefulness that you kind of grow to see in Nate throughout the franchise. Um, and I, th I think it's a role that if, if they continue to explore with future installments, that he'll definitely continue to grow into. Um, but as far as just coming right out and having to match this iconic video game role, I think he did just fine. Um, and that's, I'll try to stop with the side-by-side the -side comparisons here and talk a little bit more just about it as a movie. Um, it follows Nathan Drake and Sully as they hunt for, um, lost treasure and thought to be lost, um, thousands of years ago in the Magellan expedition. They're looking for, um, a, an artifact, a cross that they believe holds the key to finding this treasure. Um, and along the way, various hijinks ensue. They get mixed up with, um, all sorts of bad guys and villains, uh, led by <laughs> Antonio Banderas as Santiago Mancata, who believes that um, as a descendant of the Magellan Expedition, he is entitled to all of the treasure as a birthright. Um, and he's incredible. He, I wish there was more Antonio Banderas in this movie because he is in here. He knows what this movie is. He is like, I'm gonna just chew all of the scenery in my path, stay out of the way if you don't wanna get caught up in this hurricane. And he is delivering, and I was disappointed that he was not in this more. Um, I would have hoped that he would have had that. Like, it doesn't even matter really that he's kind of just like a one-dimensional villain. He is fantastic. Um, as his right-hand woman, Tati Gabrielle, as Joe Braddock, also you know good with the limited things that she had to do, which were basically like 
look evil, look crazy, kill something. Um, I thought she she did a very good job. Um, my wife liked seeing her because I guess she was in um, the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, and she she said that that was a nice departure for her to see her in this. Um, and then blurring the lines between hero and villain is Sophia Ali as Chloe Frazier, uh, that fans will recognize from the games, of course, and that's kind of it. <laughs> you get some cameos here and there, but like you can very much tell that this was a movie that was filmed during the pandemic. Uh, there's a huge set pieces. There's a lot of times where like areas um, seem more empty than they would normally be, or like the streets outside are empty, but the inside is busy, and you're like, oh, okay, I, I see what's happening here. Um, but as the action unfolds, it all kind of unfolded rather quickly for me. I was I was blown away when it was over. I was like, that was a lot that happened in what felt like a short amount of time. Like, it didn't feel like two hours. It just felt like they went from, like, big set piece to big set piece to revelation to set piece to revelation to set piece, like, very mechanically. Um, I thought a lot of the action sequences were very well staged, and I will get to that in a second. Um, but it, as a movie, it it feels like a series of cutscenes in a game. Like it it spends so much time setting these things up and ignoring things like the the motivations for some of these side characters, and really digging into more of the Sully Nathan Drake relationship for you know in exchange for just focusing on getting to the next big set piece, which they're very well, very well laid out. They're very, um, very impressive. I really enjoyed all of them. The, the Uncharted 3 cargo plane sequence is absolutely as incredible as I would have hoped it would be pulling it from the game. Uh, there's some very well staged fight scenes. It just, if for a movie that was in development hell for as long as it was, it felt like not enough attention was paid to the why for everything. And I was thinking about this a lot after seeing it, where, you know, you're you're in a tough spot with video game movies because you look at something like Resident Evil and you're like, the Resident Evil franchise went like seven movies and they like kind of incorporated in ideas from the different games as they went. Whereas like, you're like, if that was like a, a perfectly fine story arc laid out, like right there, right for the taking, and with Uncharted, it kind of feels the same, where you're like, everything you need to know about these characters and about their motivations and their backstories and everything are in the games. So if you've played the games and you're watching the movie, you're going to pick up on a lot as far as character development, and that is kind of lost otherwise. So the the movie wants you to have done the work of playing the games, but if you haven't, it wants you to really quickly pick up on the type of people that these main characters are. And that feels a little bit of a bummer because you're not seeing that relationship be deepened and fleshed out in real time, which is the whole point of making this an origin story and making this be like, oh, Nathan Drake meets Sully. So I was a little disappointed with that as far as like an underwritten script. I didn't come in expecting, you know, uh, a plus beautiful Academy Award winning script. I kind of just wanted a cool action movie with Tom Holland doing stunts. And to that end, I got it. I was just surprised that they the relationship stayed as superficial as they did for the entire movie. Um, like I said, though, expertly staged scenes as far as action sequences go. The setups are great. The reveals are great. And that's because they basically went out and got the surest hands director they could. Uh, after dozens, it seems like, of meetings and disagreements with different filmmakers, they got Ruben Fleischer, who is the director of both Zombieland films, 30 Minutes or Less, the first Venom film, um, Gangster Squad, if you saw Gangster Squad. Uh, he has a very specific style. The man knows how to do an action scene. He knows how to put some some humor into it. He knows how to keep things light and breezy and flowing from one set piece to the next. And that's exactly what he does here. I think his style is perfect for this video game adaptation type of movie. Um, I don't know as this is, if it goes on in, into further installments, I don't know how many times he can go to the same well of tricks for this franchise, if that makes sense. But 
as long as the the movies stay like this, like if they stay like hour 45, two hour, uh, upbeat, fluffy adventure movies, then, then we're good. We're like a pig in slop here with this. But if they try to be like, okay, now's the one where characters have been introduced. Let's delve a little bit deeper. I don't know if, if he's the right person for, for that. So I'll be curious to see, you know, if there's announcements in the coming week, because this has been a box office success so far, over 150 million uh, worldwide, and it is not yet opened in China, which is probably the biggest movie market in the world right now. So assuming it does very well there, I'm sure we'll get a sequel announcement. Um, so I'll be really interested to see what's happening. Mark Wahlberg's already said he was only contracted for one, but... That dude made Transformers 4, 5, and 6. I really have a hard time believing he would turn down a sequel if it was brought to him. Ultimately, I think if you're a fan of the game, you might be a little bit annoyed, but ultimately entertained watching these characters come to life. And if you're not, if you aren't familiar with the games, I think by the time the movie is over, you will want to play the games. Taking those aspects from the game that the fans have loved for so long and translating it to the movies is not always easily done. But I think for here, at least, it is definitely a success. I will give this a B. Um, I think it is well worth a watch. I think it is worth a rewatch probably once it comes out. Um, I think if you start to nitpick a little too hard, look, look a little too closely, you're going to be disappointed. Yeah, so let me know your thoughts on this movie in the comments. If you want to see more, uh, what worked for you or didn't work, uh, yeah, let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, um, and I'll be back.